Hello, everyone. I'm Josue Rodriguez with Remnant Fellowship in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And I got a quick word for you today. I just, I mean, have you noticed what's going on around in the world? I mean, you know, since 1948, when Israel became a nation, that, that kicked off something powerful in the, in the world and actually in the universe and all of existence. God's timetable was accelerated. And I believe that this is what, you know, from the time of Jesus, into the, t- the time of Jesus' first advent, when he first came as a, bi- as a baby in a manger and uh, was crucified on the, on the cross in Jerusalem so that you and I can have relationship with our Heavenly Father, our Creator. Why? Because sin, rebellion, has separated humanity from our Creator, our Heavenly Father. And so Jesus bridged the gap on the cross of Calvary and He's going to come back again. All of these things were prophesied in his word. And, uh, you know, he said what the what the days would look like before his second return. And, um, you know, look around and I want to read just a quick word uh, for you from Second Timothy, chapter three. The Apostle Paul is writing to his young protege, his young pastor, Timothy, and he tells him this. You should know this, Timothy. That in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. Do you see that happening in the world around you today? Now the key to all of this, to any biblical prophecy regarding eschatology, meaning end time study, uh, is that the nation of Israel, when God prophes- God used this prophet to prophesy to the dry bones uh, in the vision, and those dry bones coming together. Um, was a was a sign that God would restore the nation of Israel from total desolation and would once again make it a strong army and a strong nation. Well, that happened in 1948 with uh, the return of Israel after World War II. And so since then, everything that has happened after that, you can pretty much uh, look at biblical prophecy when it talks about end times after 1948. And so looking at the world when the Apostle Paul tells his young pastor that in the last days, that means after 1948, we can pretty much use that as the as the benchmark, uh, that people will be lovers of themselves and lovers of money. He says that they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, laughing at God, laughing at those and ridiculing those who believe in God, those who trust in God. They'll be disobedient to their parents, Wow, do we ever see that today? Not just, you know, parents here is not just your mom and dad, but also authority figures. Do we see that in our world today, and especially in our, in our country and in, and in the West, in Germany and France and all these places that are the Canada? All of these people that once uh, respected authority and now are just uh, totally rebelling against authority. It starts in the home, right? And they'll be ungrateful. He says that they will consider nothing sacred. Life is not sacred. I mean, we talk about the sanctity of life, right? Protecting the unborn. Um, You know, looking at what's happening with assisted suicide uh, in Canada and many parts of the world. Um, You know, just getting people to kill themselves or even war, right? People just uh, blowing each other up. I mean, that's happened forever, but specifically it will increase in these last days. And so uh, nothing is sacred. Nothing is holy. Nothing that God has created. Marriage. Look at marriage. Marriage is nothing but a piece of paper anymore. Not even that these days. And so they will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander each other and have no self-control. Guys, do you see what's happening in the world? We live in a world absent of any type of discretion or self-control uh, you know, people cannot uh, put aside the, the temptations for self-gratification. They cannot delay self-gratification no matter what it is. And it's so crazy because the Bible tells us all of these things would happen, that there would be an increase of these things before the return of the Lord. They will be cruel and hate what is good. I mean, come on, do you see that around today? They will betray their friends and be reckless, be puffed up with pride. And love pleasure rather than love God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. 
You know, listen, if you're a Christian, this is very important because there is so much deception to pull you and I away from the truth. The world is deceived. We know that the spirit of Antichrist, and that word spirit of Antichrist does not mean that there is a spirit like the Holy Spirit that is omnipresent, omniscient, knows everything, is everywhere at one time, that's, but it works for the dark side. That's not what he's talking about, but it's a, pers- it's a mindset that is global, that, that Satan has used his minions, his unclean spirits, his demonic forces that Paul, the Apostle Paul spoke of in the book of Ephesians that would work together in unison. That's the kingdom of darkness. Remember Jesus, when, they had, when the religious Pharisees, when they accused him of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub, Lord of the flies, Lord of the underworld. And Jesus said, how can, I, how can darkness cast out darkness? He says, it's not, you know, a, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand, meaning that Satan is not going to stop his own minions and his own dark spirits from destroying people's lives. If if they were going to do good, then, you know, they're not going to do good. They're going to do evil. And Jesus was doing good. And so we're seeing that in this world right now, the world is so deceived and they're just destroying one another. And the, you know, we are the light. Jesus said that we are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. We are preserving life. We are out there healing people. We're doing, we're bringing flavor to the world. And that just does not make sense. That does not sit well with Satan. And so he wants, he knows he cannot, for most Christians, he cannot destroy us and overwhelm us. So he'll try to deceive every Christian to leave their faith and say, did God really say and cause many Christians to fall away? We know that the Bible says that in the last days, many will fall away from their faith. There will be a great apostasy. And we look at the church today, the body of Christ, unfortunately, so many people have fallen out of their first love, Jesus Christ. And they have gone the way of, of Absalom. They've gone the way of, of Cain and betrayed the brotherhood, bra- betrayed the body of Christ, betrayed Jesus. They've gone the way of uh, Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. So many people are betraying one another. This is what the Apostle Paul was telling Timothy, to just be aware of these kinds of things. And listen, we're living in the last days, guys. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, all of these things are happening to point to the return of Jesus. We should not be looking for signs anymore. The signs are everywhere already. We should be listening for the trumpet blast where the dead in Christ will rise you know, it's amazing to me. I hear pe- preachers these days and Christians arguing and, and dialoguing and debating whether or not the rapture is a real thing. It, guys, listen, that is all a deception meant to distract us and rob us of the blessed hope that is in Christ Jesus, that one day we will hear the trumpet blast and only those who have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of them will hear that heavenly trumpet blast. And the Apostle Paul says that this corruption will, this corrupted body, flesh and blood will change in a twinkling of an eye and will be transported from this world to the next, from this life to the next. And yes, it's not a coincidence that all of this UFO talk and all of these things about extraterrestrials and flying saucers and UFOs is happening right now after 1948. Satan will deceive the world to think that all of these people will disappear because of aliens and, and he will unify the world. He will unify the world against this common enemy that he will call extraterrestrials, but really he's uniting the world against God. What a great deception. And the buildup has, is already taking place. It's building up right now. So many people are, are falling into this whole... Uh, craziness this 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 whole push towards accepting ufos and and does the u.s government have space aliens hidden somewhere in a bunker and these spacecrafts and all of these things guys listen i preached about it a while ago about genesis chapter 6 about the nephilim these these fallen sons of god these guys that betrayed these guys these these angelic beings that betrayed god they betrayed his kingdom 
and they went and followed the way of Lucifer, the fallen angel, the first one who rebelled. And they took women unto themselves and, cre and literally created, they passed from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. And I believe that, and they created these, 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 these humanoids that were half human and half spirit, half angelic. So this is not something that's, that's new or something that cannot be believed. And I believe that what the world is witnessing right now is an increase of, of contact between the, the physical realm and the spiritual realm. This is not a joke, guys. This is very serious. Heaven and earth, eternity, uh, heaven and hell, eternity awaits every person. It's appointed for every person to die once, and after that is the judgment. And the judgment is based on one thing and one thing only. Did we receive or, or reject the free gift of salvation through Jesus on the cross? I hope for, to, I hope for your sake the answer is yes, you've received Jesus. And if it's not, and you're still breathing, and you're above ground, and you're watching this video, now is your time. Uh, you know, don't follow all of these gurus and all of these people who they're so religious, but they don't they cannot lead you to a godly life. It's emptiness. The, the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans that there were people long ago and that in the end times right now, we're seeing it again, who worship the creation rather than the creator. So many people do that today in different ways, shapes and forms, worshiping something that God created instead of going Straight to the ultimate power, God himself. His name is Yahweh. And there's no God but Yahweh and his son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross for the world. Don't let the free gift pass you by. The free gift, it's paid for. It's yours if you want it. All you have to do is believe in your heart that you're a sinner and that you cannot get to the Father without what the, the, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. The finished work. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't be a good. You can't be a good person for it. Nothing. Your status. Your family name. Nothing can give you this free gift. It's by faith. It's by belief and trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And if you believe that and you confess with your mouth and you let people know, you let the world know, you let heaven and hell know that you are a believer and you are putting your trust and confidence in Jesus, then you are saved. Saved from what? Saved from, first of all, a wretched life here on earth, but even worse, an eternity separated from God. So many people, you know, pastors especially, I hear them preaching about a nihilism, which is just such foolishness. That's a deception right from the enemy. And I'm not saying these people are not Christian or saved, but it's foolishness, and they're deceived. The soul does not just go into... A permanent sleep, it doesn't go, the soul does not uh, get destroyed, utterly destroyed. Even the word destruction, that he'll destroy the soul in, in Hades, that doesn't word, that word destruction doesn't necessarily mean annihilation. And as a matter of fact, the word destruction there in the Greek actually means to be separated from its original intention, to be separated, to be divided, to be placed in a different place than where you originally were. So to be destroyed does not necessarily mean annihilation. I know that that makes people's conscience feel better at night, that God would not allow people to be in a place of eternal torment. But unfortunately, that is the reality. And this is why it's so important to have the faith in your heart and in your life that Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. And you know it, you believe it, you receive it, you live it. Because what's to come is so glorious and beautiful for those who have the Lord Jesus Christ. And eternity awaits of bliss and glory. And for those who don't have Jesus, darkness and gloom and punishment. It's that simple. It's not complicated. The world right now, the signs are everywhere. Don't follow the way of this world. Wide is the gate, and many there are who find it. And easy is the path. But that goes to destruction. The soul will, will, will be separated from God for all eternity. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the path that leads to everlasting life. And only a few find it, Jesus said. 
So strive. In other words, work at it. You don't have you can't work for your salvation. But what you once you have salvation, you got to work out your salvation to keep it because there's so much temptation and and so much uh, persecution and ridicule that comes your way. Challenges that will try to shake your faith and you got to fight to hold on to it. But with God, all things are possible. I hope you trust the Lord Jesus Christ today. You know, life is like, it's just a vapor. Don't live for, for what's temporal. Don't live for just the here and now. But live for what's to come for all eternity. The time is short. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. And I'm going to pray for you and uh, your family and that, that you would trust the Lord. And if you're a Christian and you believe in the Lord, listen, continue to fight the good fight of faith. Keep your faith. Don't go by the wayside. Don't be that prodigal son or daughter. Don't be that one that says that Jesus said in Matthew 24 that, oh, my master's taking so long and he begins to beat his servants and get drunk because he says, oh, he's not coming back for so long. Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Maintain your faith. Keep walking the path. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this moment. Father, I speak life over all those watching and listening right now. I'm asking Holy Spirit to fill the hearts and minds of every person right now that is listening to my voice. Lord, I pray that you bring a supernatural conviction. Lord, the seed has been planted. I pray that you water it and that you produce fruit in their lives. Lord, I pray that you bring forth a, a great harvest, Lord God, in these last days through every, in, through every person that is hearing your, your word preached to them. God, I pray right now for those who have family members that don't know you. Father, I pray for their family members to, to turn from their wicked ways and to repent and to give their lives to you. I pray for answered prayers for those who are interceding for their family members. I pray, Father, for every friend, Lord, and every loved one for that each, each one of us has that does not know you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus and stand in agreement for the salvation of their souls. Father, we pray for our nation to turn from its wicked ways, starting with the president all the way down to the, 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 the smallest and, and poorest person in the world, in this country. Father, we pray for the United States. Father, we pray for Jerusalem. We pray for Israel. Father, we pray for the peace of Israel. And we pray for every man, woman, and child who, has a dis, who is a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Blessings upon them. And Father, we thank you for all that you are, but most of all, just for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I hope uh, this was a blessing to you. Uh, don't get caught up. Listen, the, the, the word was for it to stay away from people like that. When you see people who are just, you know, defiled and wicked and you know that they're doing wrong and something inside of you is saying, don't go along with those people. Stay away from them. It's bad news. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. So stay away from them. But he who walks with the wise is wise. So walk with the wise, would you? God bless you guys. Be safe. Be well. We'll talk to you soon.